Hey gang, Evan Sutton here. I'm the senior sound design instructor here at DubSpot in New York City and online. Today we're gonna talk about reactor. We're gonna be taking a simple reactor instrument like this with one oscillator and a master fader. We're gonna add a filter and we're gonna add some filter cutoff modulation using an envelope. So make sure that your tray tables are locked. Call your mom, she's gonna have to pick you up late today. Let's get moving. So I'm starting out here in Reactor with a very simple instrument. Here I have a sawtooth oscillator. All right, I've got my note pitch MIDI module coming in over here. And then right here I have my uh, ADSR envelope. I have four knobs, one for attack, decay, sustain, release. You can see them down here in the panel. I also have my gate message coming in. That's also an outside MIDI source. And those are going in and controlling the amplitude of the sawtooth. Now, if you're unfamiliar with some of these modules and objects, go ahead and check out one of my previous reactor videos. It goes over all the basics. You can find it on the DubSpot channel. Now, what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna take this simple instrument and we can hear how great the reactor sound engine is just from using the standard sawtooth oscillator. Let's take a listen. All right, so that's pretty solid sounding. It's really nice, it's a little bit on the bright side. I mean. Of course, that's totally cool. But let's go ahead and add a filter to it. So I'm gonna break this connection. We're gonna put the filter right in between the oscillator and this mixer, which I'm just using as master volume. You can see the fader down here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete this uh, cable. And I'll right click, and I'm gonna go to built-in module. I'm gonna go to filter. And here we have our list of filters. There are all these multi-filters over here where they have a handful of different filters in one. I'm gonna go ahead and go with an old favorite of mine, the Pro 52. Now the Pro 52 filter is left over from an NI instrument of the same name, Pro 53, that has actually since been discontinued. I believe it was with Complete 4 and it was a software version of the famous Prophet 5. Now, the Prophet 5 had these really cool sounding Curtis filters, and when they discontinued the software, they decided to keep the Pro 52 filter available in things like Reactor, you can also find it in Contact, as well as Guitar Rig. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect the output of this oscillator into the input of the filter. The output of the filter is gonna to go to the input of the mixer there, and there we have it, we've lit it up. We can go ahead and play a couple of keys, and we don't hear anything. Here's why, the filter's closed. I'm gonna go ahead and make this look a little bit more organized. There we go. All right, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna right click where it says P. Now, let's create a control there. And the thing to remember is that P, we also have P here, Whenever it says P on an input of a module in Reactor, it means that that module understands logarithmic MIDI note numbers, meaning that we're gonna express frequency using a number between zero and 127. Zero being the lowest frequency and 127 being the highest. Okay, we also have F here, which we can use if we'd like, but here's P cutoff, all right? And then I also have resonance, so I'm gonna right click and create a control there. Let's just make a little room over here. Okay, there we go. So. I'll just move these around. Remember, Reactor always creates these knobs in the upper left-hand corner. So I'll go ahead and turn resonance up a little bit. Let's move the cutoff around just to make sure that we're working properly. These are great sounding filters. They're a little bit brassy sounding. I really like them. They're very unique. And this is a simple one because it's just a low pass filter. Oh, did I mention that? It's just a low-pass filter, that's it. So now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna create an envelope for modulation of the cutoff frequency. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna break this here, and I'm just gonna clone the ADSR that I have here. In fact, I'm gonna clone it along with its knobs, and let's just go ahead and put it right up here. And if we do that, Reactor will make a little room for us, and we'll uh, move this guy over here around. There we go. Come on, cutoff knob, get with the program. So I've got this cutoff knob right here, and I'm just gonna leave it to the side for now, and we're gonna connect this envelope to the same gate that the other one's connected to, because we're just using our incoming MIDI note on message to fire it. Now, if I go ahead and I plug this ADSR into P, well, it won't connect, and here's why. 
The output of this is the wrong kind of signal. This is more of, this is an audio based signal. It's a much higher resolution than P can handle in here. If it's red, it means that it's event based. It likes something that's more momentary, such as a MIDI message. So we're going to go ahead and bring in a built in module. We're going to go to auxiliary here and we're going to grab A to E. All right. And I'm just going to connect the output of my envelope here. All right. And boom, there we go. So now we have this ADSR, and I'm going to go ahead and move these knobs down here. All right, there we go. And I'm hitting the key, and we're not really getting anything. Here's why the gate message here is actually triggering the ADSR envelope, but it's also doing another thing. It's also determining its peak amplitude. The incoming G message also determines the peak amplitude. Now, by default, if we look at the gate's properties here in the function window, we can see that its range is actually set to a maximum of one and a minimum of zero. Now, this is standard. So what we have to do, and I actually like that. I like ranges between zero and one, zero and 100. It's much easier to facilitate than things like 17 and 14 and 127. Some of you may know the synths that I'm talking about. So basically, what we need to do is we need to make this envelope bigger because at its peak, this envelope is only going up to one. And one in terms of P, moving the frequency, one out of 127, that's not a lot. In fact, it's a little. So we're not really gonna hear any difference. So I'm just gonna go ahead right here, break this connection, and we'll add a built-in module. And I'm just gonna get, get mathy on you for a moment, if you don't mind. Let's just get mathy. You cool with that? Okay. In fact, I think that, you know, all of us could stand to get more mathy. It's just good for you. Breakfast of champions. So we're just going to do this. And I'm going to go ahead and I could just add a constant here and create a constant that says 127. So whenever this goes through, it's going to be multiplied by 127. And wherever this happens to be, it's going to be multiplied by 127. And it's going to move the cutoff frequency in a way that's useful to this. Now that's totally cool. But what I would like to do is take it one step further and actually create a control. Let's do that. So now what we have, it's going to say molt, okay? But I'm going to replace that with a different word. I'm going to name this knob range, okay? Now, what this is going to do is basically set it so that we know how much our envelope is actually moving the cutoff. We could have it move it a lot or a little. So let me just create this range on the range knob. I'll make the maximum 127, and the minimum zero. And so now we have something where we can actually set the overall range. This P cutoff knob is not doing anything right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit some keys. Let's, let's uh, up the decay and attack a little, and lower the attack a little bit. Let's up the range. Remember that since it is being controlled by gate, we automatically are using velocity to modulate the overall range as well. So keep that in mind. But basically. Let me go ahead and let's turn up the resonance. So this is cool and everything, but the range that we have set is just going from zero always, no matter how low we set it or how high, it's always starting at zero for the cutoff. So let's bring P cutoff back into the picture. And all we're going to do is bring it back by adding this knobs value to the output of the envelope. So we'll just go to built in module, create a little plus sign, get mathy again, once again, mathification. I'm all about the mathification of the masses. And I'll just plug this into P. And now we have P cutoff. And P cutoff, in fact, I'm going to change this range to a range of 0 to 127. I like that better. I'm just going to go ahead, and we can just lift this a little bit and maybe lower the range of that. And now we have something that's a little bit more expressive. We're determining where 0 is for this envelope, as well as how high it will go. So wherever this cutoff is set is where this envelope picks up and modulates from. <laughs> Pretty 
pretty good. A nice, big, thick, fat sound. You can create a whole lot of different types of sounds just from this very simple setup. And once you bring in some of your other skills using switches and things like that to add multiple filter types and multiple oscillators, you can really wind up with something very, very cool. And I hope this is a great starting point for some of you. I know this is something that really kind of got me at the beginning. It might seem a little complicated with the math, but if you just take a moment to kind of think about what's going on and relate it back to a synthesizer that you really know, it starts to make a lot of sense and you can start to really do some cool things in Reactor without being told how. You can really start to be thinking the way that Reactor wants you to think, which may or may not be a good thing, but uh, have fun with it. So this is Evan Sutton. You can catch me at astrolith.net. Check out some of my music. And I have more tutorials there as well as many others on the DubSpot YouTube channel. And until next time, keep making noise. I'll see you later. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.